Hi, I'm Kelly Holmes. As the National School Sports Champion, I'm back in schools in the drive to make children more active. Encouraging young people to become sports leaders is one way to increase opportunities for all pupils. And as you'll see, it develops lots of vital skills too. Lunchtime at Langer School in Felixstowe in Suffolk. While most of the children relax over lunch, a group of Year 6 pupils is getting busy sorting out equipment. Everyone, hold hands! Five days a week, the Year 6s volunteer in guiding younger pupils in a range of physical activities. It's called the Playground Activity Leaders Scheme, or PALS for short. It was the brainchild of Alison Coates. We have four types of activities going each day. There's one in the nursery for the very young children to help them get used to being in school and to, to get to know some of the older children. There's activities for Key Stage 1. Then there's a skills zone and a fitness zone. The options available help to make lunch times purposeful and increase physical activity for all pupils. And they teach a range of fundamental skills, the bedrock of future success in physical education. You can play a load of games with the amount of stuff we've got in there. Tennis, football, basketball, rounders. We don't have any special equipment, so they've only got the choice of, of what we would have for lessons for curriculum time. So bean bags, small balls, large balls, bats, tennis rackets, um, up to basketballs and footballs. We try and keep away from football as one of the lunchtime sp uh, sports because that happens anyway. So we try and encourage them to introduce things which are new or we don't have a lot of time for in the curriculum. The play leaders wear red caps. They're a badge of honour and command respect. The red cap symbols that um, we're in charge and they, must, they do what we say. I sort of stand in the background and the pals do, do the, the activities and I'm there if they get hurt or anything like that really. I don't really interfere. I don't need to interfere because they have everything under control. You're doing really well everyone. Round me. Round me, you're round me. <laughs> they do assert themselves but they assert themselves in absolutely the right way. They take responsibility, they're very caring towards the younger children. They want it to work. It's their responsibility, isn't it? It's their activity. They've organised it. They want it to run. So it's down to them that it works well. Over the years, an entire generation of children at Langer School has come to look up to the play leaders. And these children who are now in year six were the first year one and two children who actually were on the receiving end of PALS. So they've seen it all the way through now. And when they get to year six, they expect to do it. Well, mate, you look cool. You look great. Being a play leader is popular. What's in it for me? I could say that we all enjoy doing it. We all do about two sessions a week. But it's really fun for the children and us. Because we get to join in for the activities and they get to join in. And they just love doing the sport. But increasing physical activity levels and developing leadership skills is only half the story. The PALS scheme is also of great value in the classroom. Once a week, the play leaders meet to plan and design new lunchtime activities. This one looks like quite a good game for the younger children to play. Yeah, just take it out for a sec. Yeah, it's that one. a complex process. First, the children map out goals. Well, first we're going to like tell them what we're doing. And then we're going to play that one. We're like, just for a warm up. And then this one to like, you see their catching skills and everything. Next, they select games and activities appropriate to the equipment the school has available. You have to, the finish line, you have to get some sort of Rope or anything for the, fish, the finish line, don't you? It all takes place during lesson time under the guidance of Alison Coates. Good. And are you going to do this with teams like a little race? Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Initially, there was a lot more input from myself. Um, 
but now they know what to do and they come up with new ideas and they say, could we try this? I think their confidence is definitely boosted, self-esteem raised, but there's also the speaking and the communication skills basically that, that they develop through having to explain things clearly and also in writing that down because when they um, put together the game it's got to be written down clearly enough so that somebody else can come along and use that games card and understand what was intended. What equipment did you need for your game? Just stand. Just stand. Okay. Right, up you come. Game design involves making presentations to the rest of the class. Let's have a volunteer on this, Siobhan. You need to hold that. You need to listen to what Nicola's got to say and see if you can set yourself up for the game. The name of the game is Horsey Tag and it's for nursery pals. The equipment is the band. And what you have to do is everybody has a band hanging out of their trousers and somebody is on. The person who is on doesn't wear a band. You play tag, but instead of... New games are subjected to class evaluation and detailed road testing before they're launched in the playground. You put that band into your trousers and the other person's on. Okay, so she's got to tuck that in the top of her trousers and she's got to have at least three quarters of it showing. Right. So, will horsey tag make it that far? You've all listened to the instructions. Who thinks they could just go out and play it? Who knows what they're to do? Oh, wow. Is that every hand up? Well done. At Brundle School, a primary school on the outskirts of Norwich, leadership is being developed in a completely different way. But the results are just as valuable. Okay, um, I'm Chris, I've taught most of you before. Uh, today we're obviously doing basketball again, but I think he's taking a warm-up first. Chris and Martin are sixth formers at Thorpe St Andrews School, the sports college at the hub of the local school sport partnership. They're studying for the BTEC National Diploma in Sport, but to qualify, they need experience of working with primary pupils. Okay, what we're going to do is dribble in... Everyone's going to have a ball, and we're going to dribble in a certain shape of a letter. Brundle was one of the primary schools that leapt at the chance to invite the young leaders into school. Throw it up. Great shot, great shot, lovely. The scheme has been running for over a year now and there are many benefits, starting with smaller classes. While Chris and Martin work on basketball skills with one half of year five, BTEC student Katrina is working on football skills with the other half. Take your time. Good shot. Unlucky, Becky. All the sessions are carefully planned and organised. We have a strong link with the school, so we discuss it beforehand, and the uh, young leaders know what to plan as part of the national curriculum and what's happening. Uh, when they come into school, the, the um, staff are always in charge of the group, but they allow the young leaders to take the majority of the activity, and the teachers actually watch and support the young leaders as the activity is taking place. Dialogue between sixth formers and primary teachers is important and benefits everyone involved. We discuss how the children are doing and um, mutually support each other in advising and um, suggesting how to handle situations and on teaching points as well. well Next one. For the sixth formers, the experience will boost their prospects in the world beyond school. At the same time, their classes progress as a result of their specialist sports coaching skills. In Chris's case, in basketball. Yeah, you want to change hands. If you're going right, you want to be using your right hand. If you're going left, you want to use your left hand, yeah? So it makes it harder for you to get tackled when you're dribbling the ball. And those specialist skills are appreciated by the pupils. Well, um, first of all, I thought I was completely rubbish at basketball. But now I've found out, I've, I think um, I've scored quite a lot. And I think I've improved at it as well. Maybe it's because the people who are teaching us are like professionals at basketball and they really know all this stuff and that, that's probably why. For primary teachers who cannot be specialists in every subject, let alone every sport, there are great advantages too. The young leaders worked with Year 4 last year and both teachers found their input very helpful. Oh, there you go. 
The main advantage that it had for me is I found it really useful when it came to writing reports because I was able to watch the children um, interact with the others uh, as they're playing sport and I could make notes, a bit more detailed notes on um, what what their skills and capabilities were. Remember how I told the other girl, place your shot and you take it inside of your foot. So we don't want to soap plant it, okay? Well done, that's fair. Well, it was an excellent opportunity, really. I mean, I enjoyed teaching football, um, but I always welcome any chance to pick up new ideas or develop my own subject knowledge. And run back again. The idea is that the young leaders leave a lasting legacy. If we're bringing students into schools, we're uh, setting up a situation where the children are obviously being taught a new subject or a new activity. The teachers are there at the time and they're, they're not hands-on. The children actually, the students, sorry, actually take the lesson. But um, what we would hope is that once the students are away, the teachers will continue with that particular activity within school to make it sustainable. The whole idea of the partnership and the work that we do within it is to make everything we do sustainable. And sustainability shouldn't be a problem if everyone continues to derive so much from the arrangement. Today's session, um, I gain confidence in myself because I want to become a teacher, so it helps me. And I enjoy doing it because the children learn from it. And they enjoy like someone different coming into their schools other than their normal teachers. It always helps to, to teach more basketball sessions because uh, you learn a bit more every time really. Um, just how to handle the class, what's doing, the situation, how to think on your feet. Oh. For the past few years I thought that I standed out from the class like someone who is bottom of the class. You know what I mean? And today I've learned that I'm sort of middle of the class and I think that everyone tried their hardest today and it was really, really good because we got to learn some new things about basketball. Both Langer and Brundle primary schools have seen that leadership has much to offer. At Langer, the playground activity leaders develop leadership qualities and the scheme has cross-curricular applications. And their young charges take part in a range of physical activities that develop core skills. At Brundle, primary pupils and staff benefit from the sports-specific expertise of young leaders. And while the leaders in both schools refine their skills, young pupils have inspiring role models. Above all, both schools have been willing to try new ways of doing things and seen the rewards. I've taken registers of the number of children who've actually, at some point during lunch times, taken part in powers activities or been active. And it's coming out that 85 to 90 percent, or even more in some places, are taking part in activities at lunchtime. We've had some classes where it's 100 percent attendance. So it's really, really encouraging. We have found this, this link to be really, really beneficial to the school, to the teachers who have observed the, the, the students working, and to the children who benefited not just from, from receiving the teaching, but also from having inter-school mentors and, and older, older students who they can look up to. And I have no regrets whatsoever and would thoroughly recommend this sort of link to anybody at any other school.